Hi everybody, welcome back to our podcast. And anyway, um, I know that you have never seen our guest today, New Face. Can you please introduce yourself? Hi everyone, my name's Aaron. Yeah, so uh, Aaron here uh, is a teacher in uh, Real English or Eons International Education. Uh, she's been working here for quite a long time. And um, yeah, we have a native speaker here. So if any one of you are wondering, you know, because they, they like asking that question, like, hey, do you have a native speaker? Yeah, we do. In the flesh, <laughs> you see? So yeah, in any case, um, today we'll be answering another set of questions uh, given by the uh, audience. They are quite curious about the IELTS um, test. And so this is exactly why we'll have Aaron here with us. And in any case, before we get to the nitty gritty, um, you know, could you tell us a bit about yourself? I'm pretty sure they're quite curious, you know, like what's, what is, you know, a foreigner doing <laughs> <laughs> in Indonesia? So like, where are you from maybe? And like, what brings you here? What to say? Yeah, I'm from Australia, so it's mm. nice and close by. Mm -hmm. Not that far away. Yeah, yeah. Mm. and I've been here for a long time mm -hmm. since 2010, actually. Mm -hmm. But mm. since 2012, here at mm -hmm. Real English, before mm -hmm. that mm. in Central Java. Yeah, but teaching the whole time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Always been a teacher. Eh? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So Australia to Indonesia. Yeah, but um, if I can ask, like you know, like what what initially brings you here? Like, is it for work or were you initially just traveling and then you just found maybe comfort in Indonesia and decided to you know make a living here or initially traveling traveling to see my sister actually my sister was here before me mm. she was studying at university here in mm. Georgia Ogem is it or yeah I'm mm. Ogem mm. and she's she's actually still here but she's in Samarang mm. so move city so. yeah mm. first time was to yeah visit her mm -hmm. and you know how traveling goes, just one day you never go back home. Yeah. <laughs> You're just like, ah, might as well. <laughs> might, as well this here. <laughs> <laughs> might as well. I mean, Sarin speaks like uh, some Indonesian mm -hmm. as well, yeah? Because you've been here for a very long time, like about 10 years or something, mm -hmm. right? Or more, right? Yeah. So um, don't worry because, you know, they're kind of concerned sometimes, you know, like, what if the native speakers doesn't speak Indonesian? You know, like, what if they don't speak Indonesian? And like, what if I don't understand English and she's going to teach full English? Yeah. Mm -hmm. She's absolutely going to teach full English because you're learning English. But like, you know, um, don't worry uh, about not getting your point across. Mr. <laughs> Miss Arian doesn't bite, you know, so... <laughs> And I can understand. Yeah, she does understand, you know, what you're saying most of the time. So don't worry about that. Anyways, uh, I'm curious. So uh, you said that you have been here for about 10 or something years, right? Mm -hmm. um, did you by any chance study here too? Or do you study back in Australia? Yeah, so in Australia. Study, yeah, yeah mm. finished my study in Australia, then moved here. Talking about English still. So a lot of people in eons um, want to learn English, but not for the general program, like actually, you know, as, as, as it goes um, by, like as recently, they have been trying to um, study more about IELTS, mm -hmm. which, you know, we have several t uh, English testing systems, right? Like the two full test, the IELTS test. Um, and I think SAT, is that part of it? Uh, that has a separate purpose, but it is yeah. test preparation. That's for entrance into an undergraduate program. It's not a test of your English skill. Mm. But English is a part of SAT. Or it not? is in mm. English. The test is in English and mm. it's brutal. Mm. But it's actually like an admissions test because then you need like IELTS or IBT as well. Okay, so it's like it doesn't, um, you know, it cannot replace um, the IELTS or the IBT. No, right. generally mm -hmm. it replaces like a foundation year. Most people, if they travel abroad for an undergraduate degree, oh, have to do a curriculum Indonesia, yeah. if they take Indonesian curriculum, like non IB or non Cambridge A levels. Yeah, you'll mm. be asked to do a foundation mm. year first. With the SAT, you can shortcut that system. So you just bypass the foundation. Mm. So you still have uh, IELTS, uh, TOEFL, and I think DBT now is also gaining popularity. Mm. The Duolingo test yeah uh, but uh, today we're going to discuss more about IELTS guys so Miss Erin here teaches IELTS for more than 10 years I guess yeah you've been teaching IELTS um, a lot and I guess what we should be really discussing here is first um, what the IELTS test is about really like what is this test you know like in a how would you describe this test and second of all um, how can we better navigate this test you know like some tips some tricks maybe and yeah, what do you think? 
what is this test? Yeah. <laughs> Aside from the fact that it's an English testing system, you know, like more details on it. Well, it's it's a holistic language test as mm. opposed to like paper-based TOEFL when you there's not really much mm. productive English mm. going on it's testing your productive English as well mm. so you're looking at the four different skills speaking writing listening reading mm. and usually there are minimum band mm. scores on all of them you're not allowed to do mm. fantastic in one and crash another one mm. but yeah and it's used for everything these days yeah. you can use it to get into university here mm -hmm into the international programs yeah. abroad. Mm -hmm. The general test is becoming very popular at the moment because I don't know if you follow all of the immigration stuff online, mm -hmm. but the working holiday visa in Australia is open again. So mm. the general test is very popular at the moment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So like uh, IELTS, by the way, guys have an academic and a general test. So like they have two different um, types. And usually people would just take the academic for, for like universities, um, job application, I guess, not including the working visa. I think most of them use this academic, right? Yeah. Use academic. Mm -hmm. And uh, except for the, the visa, yeah, you said. Yeah, if you're looking for a work visa, like mm. the working holiday visa to Australia, then you would take the general IELTS. Mm. If it's like highly skilled labor, you might still be asked to do the academic test. Mm. So still, I guess the most popular one would be the academic one, but mm. the general test is also gaining popularity it lately is, due to yeah. um, apa the immigration opening slots for working visa in Australia. Yeah, it kind of like closed down during the pandemic. Mm. So now it's back again. Yeah, it's mm. gaining speed. Mm -hmm. so okay, okay. So um, there are four components you mentioned, right? Like the listening, the reading, the writing, and the speaking. Which one would you personally feel uh, like it's, you know, which one do you think it's most challenging for, especially Indonesian speakers or Indonesian learners? Writing. <laughs> Just because the yeah. writing, they are unforgiving. That's true. I think they're quite meticulous in how they grade now. Yeah, the speaking, there's quite a level of understanding that it's spontaneous, you're nervous, you're going to make mistakes kind of I thing. I think they have more tolerance there. Yeah, but the writing, no, you've got time to think, so mm. if you want a high score, it's going to be perfect. Yeah, but could you like maybe elaborate more on that? Like what makes the writing so rigorous, you know? Like what makes the, like how is it so rigorous and like... Um, how, what can we do to like avoid mistakes there? Like, what are your general do's and don'ts? Well, IELTS compared to something like IBT, they're very, well, reasonably, I shouldn't say very, reasonably fixed in what they want to see. Like, you can't just go in and write some random essay that hasn't been organized. No mm -hmm. matter how good your English is, if you're like wandering off topic, you haven't organized your yeah, material. And like the structure, right? Uh -uh. Mm. Then you're still going to struggle to score high. So mm -hmm. it's being prepared for the test and mm. know what, mm. knowing what they're doing and mm. then grammar, grammar, grammar at the end of the day. <laughs> Something you can't avoid, unfortunately. Yeah, but legit, so many Indonesian students struggle with that, I think, mainly. Mm. Like, sometimes they have good ideas and no way of, they have no idea how to, I guess, deliver their ideas properly. And, like, delivery is then one thing and packaging is another, you know? Like, how they would say, like, uh, for example, yeah, um, I think, you know how they, how they're too skewed on like one thing to the point it's like controversial. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just like you don't want to say that, you know, like be a little bit politically correct, you know. <laughs> but yeah, I guess like also the mm, cross cultural understanding. Yeah. Some things like they've got it in their head in one way in Indonesian, and they've put it into English and haven't quite realized how strong <laughs> their <laughs> the opinions are. Yeah, because I think their examiners are also not Indonesian, right? Supposedly. Uh, some of them might be. Mm. Uh, our examiners in Jogja are not, but a lot mm. of the examiners in Jakarta are. Mm. But in Jogja, the examiners are um, natives, yeah. yeah. Mm. I guess that, that even emphasizes why. Because I think there's a level of subjectivity in the writing and speaking tests, no? I mean, like, of course, they have like this score sheet, but I think, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, my personal take on it, it's still, it's still subjective to a certain degree. I mean, like, it's not the same as the reading and the um, listening, whereas they have this like clear cut answers, right? It's a bit more black and white. Yeah. And like, I think the writing and the speaking, despite their best efforts to make it um, objective or like their best efforts to make it, you know, quite specific, I think there's still that layer of what they, 
find as acceptable and not and i think that is like you can't really bypass that you know so like uh i think yeah grab if you want to i think personally but i don't know what's your take on this but i think personally how you can i don't know probably um increase your chances in getting a high score would be to just get all of the objectivity things in check you know like the grammar you said right the mm-hmm. uh apa namanya the substance i think is also maybe that's not the main point but i think if they go off topic or if their development isn't enough i think that affects their score right yeah there is a uh, task achievement task response score mm. and like you don't have to be an expert on any topic doesn't mm. matter how good your ideas are or mm. how creative they are but they be do need to be on topic mm-hmm. yeah i think that's what most people forget like they forget to be reasonable i think <laughs> or there's a misunderstanding with the question sometimes mm. people read the question and think oh i meant to be writing about this and mm. they've actually slightly misinterpreted the question yeah which can which can lead to problem. yeah mm-hmm. and i think another issue that i see that they like to make is they write they thought IELTS essay is equivalent to campus and high school essays which would entail them to make a whole page of introduction uh, very yeah and i was like elaborate mm-hmm. yeah and like i think they also think that um i think the IELTS test doesn't really adhere to one paragraph five sentences rule right Like have I like mean, what? there's nothing wrong with a one paragraph, five sentences, but it's not that fixed. Uh, and in writing, um, you have two parts, right? Mm-hmm. The first and the second part. Could you like maybe help us more on that? Like, what are those parts about? Well, task one for most people is the more challenging one because in task Agreed. one, you need to summarize data basically. So you could mm. be given a graph or a chart, or maybe a process mm. or a maps. Mm-hmm. Uh, for the graphs and charts, the difficult thing is that you need to be able to identify what is important <laughs> because you're not allowed to just report everything. Yeah, like you, you don't have to state everything in your. Yeah, yeah. you got to identify the key trends. Mm. You got to know which data is important. Yeah, to dominant. Report, which, one. which one is most the least, right? Mm. Mm. The for me personally, mm-hmm. I find the processes and the maps a little bit more straightforward because yeah. even though it's very strict in terms of the tenses that they're expecting to mm-hmm. see, mm-hmm. there's less of the identifying what the trend is, what's the important information. It's kind of all important. Yeah, it yeah. just needs to be grouped appropriately. Yeah, I think you just have to learn how to structure it better, I guess, for mm-hmm. especially for the process because like you don't need to make things up right of you know you don't you don't need to like make up words because like it's there you just need to like reiterate but you know say it in a passive tense passive voice right i think mm-hmm. and i think the fact that uh, they are more strict with their tenses is also better because then you know you know just stick yeah. to this one tense like present simple or like plus simple you know just just like one this. <laughs> yeah passive and that's all you need to care about but like with graphs sometimes they have like future projections or something and they have like the past the present the future in like one single graph and sometimes they have double graph like one graph present one graph past and i think that's a tad bit more challenging for students usually it is and i have a lot of students who don't come from scientific backgrounds <laughs> like they're not very accustomed to reading data so uh, yeah. like perhaps they're studying literature or something and they're like why why do i have to write do this. about a graph yeah and i'm going to continue my studies in literature and they're making me write about a graph yeah <laughs> but i think that's an interesting point do you know do you have any idea why the ielts uh test is 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 you know constructed this way like why uh, why in particular do we need graphs is it to balance out their english application towards a more you know mathematic and a more liter- literature based approach or well i think in a way there kind of is a balance because those who come from like literature kind of backgrounds or humanities mm-hmm. will often feel more comfortable with writing task 2 or mm. those from engineering backgrounds might be like Ooh. with mm. writing task too. Mm. So there is kind of a balance there. Mm. And you don't have to understand exactly what's going on in the graph. You can still figure out a way to get a good response without really knowing what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Yeah, so if you're, you know, wondering enroll, you know, like maybe Miss Erin will give you like more detailed comments on that after mm-hmm. seeing like your capacities, your skills and where you are. Mm. But is there anything you would like to add about writing? or like enough. Mm, I think that's probably enough. I think the only other thing that I notice between perhaps Indonesian students and how we would write in Australia is that in English we tend to be quite concise. 
That's true. A little I bit agree. more to the point. If it's not necessary for the sentence, don't include it. I agree. Whereas yeah. here, it tends to be a little bit more. They have elaborate, detailed. Mm. They like the putting way. like anjar anjar in their sentences. You know, like the basa basi part. Yeah. So today, um, uh, I will be discussing about. No, no. <laughs> I mean, like scrap that. I always said that scrap that. You know, just put like. Um, you know, just paraphrase instantly and like tell them what you're going to talk about below without like having to introduce the terms and everything. Like, um, I guess what's going to be challenging for them is understanding the structure, like, you know, adapting, adopting actually, adopting the new um, uh, foundations, I guess, like in their head when it comes to writing. Because I guess um, it has quite a diff, it's quite significant, you know, the difference between. Indonesian way of writing an essay and like an IELTS mm. IELTS way of writing an essay. So I do agree with you on that. But what about reading, listening and speaking? Like what are your general tip on that? Well, speaking we say is probably the second biggest challenge for people. These days, uh, reading and listening seem to be going a bit better. Yeah, I, I would so. say like in general, the quality of English, particularly in Jogja, has yeah. Is improving gradually, particularly increasing. like mm. the, the receptive skills, mm. the reading and listening. The productive one is another issue, though. Yeah. yeah, I don't know if productive skills are like focused on mm. enough in school. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of like reading and listening comprehension, but not everyone is being active in their use of English. Yeah, so speaking can be a bit of a challenge there, especially if you're suddenly put in a room with a native. <laughs> <He's> like, <laughs> <laughs> I like how we just like yeah, instantly like we just know what's going on you know because like um, I do get that not you know sometimes I, I sub your class or sometimes I, I have like a half half class with you right half half class is like Miss Erin would teach like 10 meetings I would teach 10 or, like 8 meetings and 10 and then uh, I would like hmm. and I would like ah ada guru bule nya nanti kalau aku gak ngerti gimana and I was like Calm down, you know, like relax. If so you can't understand the teacher, what are you going to do in the test? <laughs> yeah. Like, this is a good way for you to be simulating, I guess. Yeah, you, you got to try yourself out, I guess. Yeah, I recommend everyone, if you have the chance, like, mm -hmm. not everyone has the opportunity, but to talk to a native speaker before you go into an IELTS official test. So That's it's not the first time you've ever spoken to a foreigner. Yeah, yeah. Would be great, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I agree with you. Speaking, I think it's generally because I think th the Indonesian curriculum doesn't really teach you to speak a lot. Like, they mm -hmm. let you write and write, they, they read a lot, they s listen a lot. Like, sometimes they watch movies and everything, but they don't really get the stage or like the room to just practice what they have received and i guess that might be the main factor as to why their speaking and writing is not the best i guess uh, mm -hmm. and they might need more guidance on that but then in that case if reading and listening um it's not really problematic then this uh, for the last part of this podcast i just go to the speaking part do's and don'ts do's and don'ts in the speaking test yeah <laughs> are we going general or up to you whichever fits Okay, well, how about some common mistakes first? Yeah. Common mistakes in the speaking test, obviously not talking enough. Mm -hmm. Okay, we get mm -hmm. a lot of like, if the examiner says to you, do you have a pet? Don't say yes or no. Yeah, do you? Yeah. A lot of some people are like, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> and then they're just like, mm. okay. Better shut up now. <laughs> Yeah. Like not speaking enough, like even though that was an accurate answer, grammatically correct, yeah. it shows no range whatsoever, right? It's yeah. just like four words. It doesn't words really put showcase together. your abilities. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's what you mm -hmm. need to do showcase what you can do. Yeah. So the more that you talk, the more you can showcase, showcase. what you mm -hmm. do. Okay. That being said, if you talk a lot, the examiner much, will yeah. No coherence, you. cohesion whatsoever. <laughs> Get well so soon. A <laughs> bit of control there would be good. <laughs> yeah. And I think another. Mm -hmm. One of the problems I see a lot is people treating it like a job interview. Yeah, it's too formal, you know, like there's no conversation going on whatsoever. Or they're like, um, thank you for your time and the opportunity. Yeah, thank you for the question. And mm. say that they answer that for every single question. That's very polite. I like, I'm not. Yeah, we're not opposed to it, but. I'm like, not trying to make fun of that yeah. or anything, but it's, you want to show how natural your English is. Yeah. So it's better that you're talking like you're talking to a friend rather than, than you're talking to an employer yeah 
<laughs> it wants to be as natural as possible. So people get too caught up in the mm-hmm. being super polite, being super formal, mm-hmm. uh, giving what they deem to be the right answer. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like when you ask, if do you like reading? Yeah, meanwhile, like they don't really care if you yeah. like reading or not. They care about what you say. I guess mm-hmm. like how you say it. Yeah, in English. So literature yeah, wise literary pre- devices wise yeah, mm. pretending that you do something because you think it'll be an impressive answer but just telling the truth yeah mm. because like I think it will eventually be more challenging for you if you make an answer up you know like that's difficult because like you have to later on think on the spot like ah, ngomong apa ya? meanwhile like you don't really know how that is and I think it's fine for you to say no and some of them don't answer the questions mm. uh, I actually notice it a lot with me as well mm. Like sometimes I'll ask a question and I'll think, oh, this person's not answering my question. Mm. But it's actually the panic mm. that they're feeling. So they're not mm. actually listening to the question or hearing the question correctly and yeah. what they think they've heard. So mm. there is that having to try and control. Yeah. <laughs> Stay calm yeah. so that you're listening carefully because people who are panicking do not listen carefully. Yeah, yeah. But the good thing about the IELTS test is that you can actually ask for the question to, to be, be repeated. repeated. Yeah. yeah. But not too many times, I guess, right? Yeah, I wouldn't go overboard with it, or it yeah. looks like you're doing it deliberately. Yeah, you just <laughs> like get more ulang. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you shouldn't be like, huh? Yeah. What? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I try to like mask it. Like, ah, oh, that's a very interesting question. If I may just have three seconds to say it, would that be okay or not? Like, for example, you say like, ah, oh, you know, like, um, f- let's say you don't know how to answer, mm. right? And you're like, ah, oh, that's a very interesting question. If I could just have a mm. moment to think about it. That's acceptable, right? Absolutely fine. I mm. think people get like overly focused on things that you shouldn't be doing during the test when the IELTS test is actually relatively natural yeah it's okay to say I have no idea what the question means but let me give it a shot yeah okay or mm. to say like I'm blanking yeah. I need a moment yeah it's okay you don't have to be talking non-stop in perfect English yeah, at all yeah. times. you don't have to be uh, magnificent I guess even in term mm-hmm. when it comes to composure I guess as long as you lay out your responses in a in an adequate manner, yeah. I mean, like in a satisfactory manner, should be enough, yeah. Berarti. Yeah. Mm. Or if you're experiencing some kind of problem, like you need to think for a moment, say that, yeah, rather than just going quiet and having the examiner wonder what, what you're doing. Yeah, <laughs> like tiba-tiba kan. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, just be like, I need a moment. Yeah, I need to think about this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And in any case, um, I guess unfortunately, time's up here. Eh? Uh, is there anything else you would like to add before we close, Miss Erin? Sorry for the abrupt cut, guys. Time constraints. Mm. We wish we can discuss more, but maybe in the next episode. Or if you go here and you can ask Miss Erin about more. But in any case, do you have anything else you would like to add before we end this podcast today? Uh, well, just a last comment on mm. speaking. One of the important things is to know your test venue before you take the test mm. because some speaking tests are happening face to face some are online face to face but actually <laughs> through laptops through a laptop yeah. some are uh, voice call they're all different yeah. and any unexpected situation or change in circumstances can completely throw you off guard nervous yeah. people mm. so mm. just knowing exactly what's going to happen will make sure you stay calm yeah could could help a lot with um i guess their state of mind yeah during <laughs> the d <D-day. laughs> yeah you don't want surprises on test day yeah you're just like ah boo <laughs> <laughs> yeah but in any case i guess that's it for now yeah mm-hmm. thank you very much guys for watching and we'll see you in the next episode <laughs>